Good afternoon. I would like to take a quick moment to thank my colleague, Stacy Linksick, for the invitation to speak with you all today. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to join you regarding your MLS white coat ceremony going on this afternoon. I mean, what's the deal with white coats and doctors anyway? I mean, in short, according to the doctor's white coat, a historical perspective, an article published in the American Medical Association Journal of Ethics, the white coat has served as the preeminent symbol of physicians for about a century now, almost a hundred years. And while the white coat is rich in history, the white coat ceremony is actually relatively new. In fact, the first official white coat ceremony, if you're wondering, didn't take place until the early 1990s. It was really developed by a teacher and pediatric neurologist, Dr. Arnold P. Gold, to bring a humanistic focus to medicine. And that tradition now continues for future doctors as well as many other healthcare professionals like nurses, even veterinarians, certainly medical laboratory professionals and others that are in our, in our profession. Really trying to remind us of the obligations not only to care for the patient, but also to understand the role of the patient in healthcare. And I think the medical laboratory profession certainly is in that realm. But what I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about is that I would say the future is not about a white coat or scrubs or anything else that you choose to wear to work in the future. No, I think your future is about who is in that white coat or in that laboratory uniform or in scrubs or whatever it is that you end up wearing one day to your uh, professional journey. I am so excited to be here with you guys to discuss your journey. Uh, my own personal journey, just for some quick context and background, is one I really would never have envisioned. In fact, I often tell my students and my children and my family that I never in my life would have dreamed I would have ended up where I am today, being a chair and a professor, a uh, research dean, and in other roles uh, in the medical laboratory profession. I just never would have envisioned that for myself. Perhaps you've heard a little bit about my journey and some of the articles I've written, like the hidden profession that saves lives, or maybe some of the interview, interviews I've conducted about how we save lives in the healthcare shadows. I really didn't begin my uh, journey down this path personally until 1985 when I showed up at what was then Southwest Texas State University and showed up like a lot of students that love science and math and things like that. And I showed up and I decided, you know, I think I'll throw my hat into the ring for a, a biology pre-med type of major. Well, I took my first microbiology class late my sophomore year and I just fell in love with clinical microbiology and infectious diseases. And so that's where I put my, all my money at was in that microbiology major. Then uh, I continued on after that into a master's degree in virology uh, within the biology department. And literally no one, uh, no one ever informed me about this thing known as a medical laboratory major. I just had never heard of it. It was literally across the street from the biology department where I was working on my uh, bachelor's in microbiology. So seven years, uh, two degrees, I never knew about the medical laboratory scientist or the medical laboratory professional journey. It's only when I began a career search after those two degrees and thought, you know, I, I'm ready to go to work. I'm gonna go to work in a hospital laboratory and be a medical microbiologist. And I found out real quickly, as many of you probably realize, I couldn't get that job. I didn't have the, the credential of a medical laboratory scientist. I had two degrees uh, in microbiology and virology but I didn't have a credential to sit in a, uh, a laboratory in a hospital setting that would allow me to test clinical samples, human samples. So needless to say, I was not a very happy person, but as I often again tell my own children who are college age now and, and my students, there's always a way to find your dream. And so Luckily, I was blessed and found my first job at the Department of Health in Austin, Texas with the Bureau of Laboratories, working as a public health microbiologist. And I spent a decade there uh, and I had wonderful, a wonderful time working here. I spent time in newborn screens, which was an eye opener for me. 
for about two years. And that's really where I learned about uh, this thing called a, a medical technologist, you know, an MT was the old terminology for medical life science and started asking questions and finding out about this profession and found out, thankfully, that there was a, a working route to get these uh, types of certifications. So I ended up staying at the Department of Health in Austin, uh, working in newborn screens. I worked in virus isolation, which was awesome. I worked with all viruses known to mankind. And then for the last six years or so there, I worked in a hybrid position, which changed my life. Uh, I worked 50% uh, of the time in the rabies arbovirus laboratory and 50% of the time in zoonosis control division as a molecular epidemiologist. And really what that allowed me to do was to begin this journey of working on international public health projects. And to make a long story short, I ended up uh, creating the regional reference uh, typing laboratory for Texas and surrounding states. And I typed uh, uh, rabies specimens from around the world, uh, as well as participate in the inaugural oral rabies vaccination program. And I mean, it was, it was a fantastic time. I wouldn't, this is the one thing I wouldn't change about my path. So again, you can get to your dreams, although sometimes it may be a different route. And so I ended up working there. I got two stints at the CDC, which was also a dream learning from the world's leading rabies authorities and, and really put into place the groundwork that eliminated canine rabies from Texas using aerial recombinant vaccination uh, baits dropped from airplanes. So just an amazing 10 year journey to start my career. And all during that time, uh, I was learning from medical technologists, medical laboratory scientists, and uh, learning about that profession, about the working route. And so I set for the specialist in virology and obtained that specialization in 19, I'm gonna say 96 or 97. And then from that point, I was also adjuncting uh, at the uh, Austin Community College, teaching microbiology to nursing students. Again, not thinking I would ever be a professor, but just enjoying teaching and, and having a family and needing that extra income. And along the way in 2001, I, I came back to Texas State, my alma mater, at an invitation to teach microbiology for a, a person who was on sabbatical. And lo and behold, learned that there was a clinical lab science program, AKA medical lab science across the street from where I did my undergrad degree. And they found out about me uh, through their communication channels. And the CLS program needed a medical microbiologist to kind of handle all the micro courses. And here I am, I switched careers in 2002 and have worked my way all the way up uh, to chair and professor in the clinical laboratory science program here at Texas State University. Uh, I've been a research dean in the College of Health Professions, and I'm currently the associate director for translational health uh, research at the university. And I'm a past president for uh, the Texas Association for Clinical Lab Science and other things. I tell you all these things again because I want to talk to you about your journey, your journey that's really starting with your educational career. So let's get back to your journey, okay, enough about me. Let me begin by telling you what many of you already understand, that you are living in historical times. The fact that you are watching this keynote virtually should say something to each of you. This is your time as future medical laboratory professionals. We are living in a time of unprecedented uncertainty regarding your public health and healthcare. As of this past week, the world has exceeded over 38 and a half million COVID-19 cases and 1.1 million deaths caused by this novel virus known as SARS-CoV-2. In the US alone now, we exceed 8.1 million cases and over 220,000 deaths from this pandemic. We have not even finished one complete year of this global public health crisis and emergency. For some perspective, Consider the following. During the 1918 flu pandemic, the number of deaths was estimated to be at least 50 million globally, with about 675,000 uh, occurring in the United States. And World War II, which maybe some of your parents and, and grandparents talk about, led to just over 291,000 deaths during about a four year period. And here we sit today on your white coat ceremony, October 19th, 2020. We're 10 months into this pandemic 
and we are already approaching a mortality number that approaches World War II in just 10 months. And really, we don't know what the next year or two holds, or three, or four. We really do not know going forward due to the nature of this novel virus that we're still learning about. Again, I tell you, we are living, you and I, we are living in historical times. I want you to take a moment right now to reflect on this as each of you are beginning your educational and career journey in the medical laboratory. I would say that we have an opportunity. This pandemic has shined a light on our professional and professionals like no other time in history. I've been working in the medical laboratory in some form or fashion for almost 28 years now. And it is your time. It is our time to shine due to what's going on globally with this pandemic. What are you prepared to do as you enter your coursework, clinical experiences, and eventually your career? I would challenge each of you to tell your story and really to tell our story, tell my story about how this profession is critical and vital to our current and ongoing place in the healthcare setting. You see, we provide the bulk of laboratory medicine data for all patients, which allows physicians and really all healthcare team members to make a diagnosis and to create a treatment plan. Simply put, we are the quality controlled gatekeeper in patient care and safety, period. No one, do, no one does what we do in healthcare. We are in a unique situation. We're always in a unique time period. And during this pandemic, that shows like no other time. You may have heard me state or seen me write, we save, li we save lives every day in the medical laboratory. And we must continue to find leaders and team members to raise our visibility as our current ASCLS president has called on us to do. We must raise that visibility, not only in our professional world, but also with other healthcare members and around the public arena. When you're facing adversity during your coursework, and you will, as your professors will tell you, persevere. When you have others who do not understand what your college major is, speak up. When you have classmates or others who complain that no one understands who you are or what you do or what your future career is going to be, stand up, speak up and be seen. Raise that visibility for not only yourself, but for us, for the collective medical laboratory profession. There are so many ways people often ask me this, you know, how did you start getting into this role of science communicator and advocator for the medical laboratory professional? Well, there's a lot of different routes. At first, I would say I had an amazing mentor and mentors throughout ASCLS, throughout ASCP, other organizations that you're gonna learn about or maybe you already know about, through my university, through my colleagues. There are just so many ways to do this to help us raise the visibility of the profession. I would challenge each of you to join a professional organization as a student if you're not already a member. Begin to network now be mentored by leaders in the field. Don't let them seek you out. Seek them out. Find someone that you are able to communicate with and work with and who challenges you uh, and, and motivates you and encourages you to speak about what you do so that we can become one collective voice. ASCLS, the American Society for Clinical Laboratory Science, or ASCP, our ASM, I'm a member of the American Society for Microbiology. I'm also a member of the Association for Public Health Laboratories. There are so many professional organizations and state organizations for you to consider. They do cost money, but every dime is well spent because they're leveraging uh, their place among uh, the political world as well as the healthcare world to help us raise that visibility. Find your lane. Find which lane works for you and start driving in it. Start heading down that journey, down that road to the place that can help us raise that visibility. Find a place to shine your light on this profession that helps us all. Who knows? It might be that you join a patient safety or advocacy committee, or it might be joining a legislative action team at a state or national level to fight for our rights in the, in the billing area or some other area of the laboratory. 
let your future hospital employer know that you would like to be appointed to an infection control and prevention committee or to an antibiotic stewardship program committee to show the value the medical microbiology laboratory can be with a clinical ID pharmacist, for example. Work across professions, work with others. I've been doing this recently and there's great value in working with pharmacy and physicians and others. You can find those individuals that will stand up with you to raise the visibility of all our collective professions. Finally, as a student and as a graduate, visit with your junior high and high school that you went to. Let them know about the medical laboratory. I, if I had a dollar for every time I talked to another class of junior high or high school students, as well as college students, I, I go visit the, uh, the microbiology society or the chemistry society. They just simply do not know about our major. Let them know the sooner the better so they can get into our path. And as you gain experience and expertise, become a willing subject matter expert who is willing to speak, write, and be interviewed for things like podcasts or other journalistic opportunities to help raise the awareness of this critical importance in our field. This past week, for example, an article came out in the Wall Street Journal that I was uh, blessed and fortunate to be interviewed along with several of my colleagues. And what we let them know, what we let the world know, is did you know that right now, right now in this time period, the United States has processed more than 1 million daily COVID-19 tests four times in the past week, four times. The, the demands placed on laboratories are exacerbating long-standing staffing shortages, including some laboratories grappling to find solutions to address labor shortages and prevent employee burnout, including hiring traveling laboratory scientists, investing in automation, and sometimes flexing schedules or raising salaries. This impacts you too, because there are sometimes not enough clinical sites and hospitals around the, your state or area to support medical laboratory science programs. We need to be seen now. We need scholarship programs. We need funding to build more medical lab and, and MLT programs at the associates level, as well as DCLS programs at the national level. We need this now because things are only going to continue to worsen in the levels of staffing and uh, due to retirements for veterans in this area. So I'm gonna say it again, what will you do in the coming years to raise our visibility? There's no time to waste, period. We need each one of you in our profession, not only as a worker, but as an ambassador. I know it's a lot to ask, but I think you'll find that it, it's an amazing path if you join us and we join hands together and we kind of move forward in this need right now. I am so excited for each one of you, and so are your professors. Thank your professors. Look around at them. Even when they're just whipping you into shape with respect to all the knowledge you have to acquire, they are doing it out of patient safety and advocacy. Remember, they're the gatekeepers for quality and care. That's your first gatekeeper, and then later you will be part of that gatekeeping society. You have an amazing journey ahead of you. There will be tough days ahead, especially in your educational journey. Why? Because, you, we, because we, medical laboratory professionals, have one of the most rigorous and tough majors out there. Be proud of that. I often tell my students that they're majoring really in four areas, hematology, microbiology, clinical chemistry, blood banking. And then on top of all that, quality control, statistics, research, management. I mean, there's, there's really no other major like us. Your major is second to none, period. Earn it, own it. Let others know how proud you are of it. So as you begin or continue with your educational journey here at South Dakota State University, be sure to celebrate each other. Encourage each other during those difficult courses and exams, as well as during your clinical experiences. Trust the process of your professors and clinical preceptors. It will not be easy, but it will be so worth it. Today, you are being celebrated for your selection in a, into a prestigious profession during this white coat ceremony. I believe that leadership, community service, community service, character, and integrity are also embedded in your past and future success. They are the core 
of a fulfilled and fulfilling life. The most important thing to remember is that each of these characteristics is the sum of many individual decisions. Each of you are going to be making those individual decisions over the coming years. They embody a positive attitude backed by purpose. The only way to achieve your purpose is to take small actions every day. In the end, they will all add up to success. My hope for you is that you will cultivate this attitude backed by purpose in your own life and empathy towards patients and others. Too many of us today, too many of us today, I tell my, my college age children this all the time and other students, we take the road well-traveled that is full of potholes named mediocrity and quote, it's not my job or by blaming others or someone else will take care of it. So understand right now that it is full of hard work and sometimes failure during your educational journey and beyond, but it's well worth it. As Thomas Edison says, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Do not ever give up. Press forward in your journey. As my father told me as a young boy growing up on the farm, Hard work never killed a man, Rodney, so outwork everyone. I firmly believe this today. I still believe it. It's how I raised my children, my, my wife and I raised them this way. I tell my students this, and anyone who will listen, that success, true success in this life, is really, a, you know, sometimes 50% intelligence. You might say, what? I believe this, because I also know the rest is hard work perseverance, stick to itedness, not quitting when times get tough. Persevere, stay the course, do not quit while you're on this difficult journey in our major. We need you. We need you to stand up and speak up for our profession. I heard all of these statements from my parents and yeah, like you or when I was younger, I might roll my eyes, but they all have come back uh, in so many ways to show how success is earned. I thank them every day for that, uh, more and more as they get older, including professors and mentors. So in conclusion today, I want to congratulate each of you for this honor and celebration. You are truly the best of the best. Enjoy today, and I wish you the best in your journey as a future professional. You have the brightest of futures ahead of you. Do not hesitate to give me a shout as you progress in your journey, I would love to hear from you and to celebrate in your achievements. And remember always, it is a journey, not a race. So surround yourself with mentors, family, loved ones, and get to work. Take care and God bless. Have a wonderful white coat ceremony and, and the rest of your evening. Thank you.